of the home advent wreaths that people have sent pictures of us um, to us of and they're beautiful and I hope you see those and enjoy those because I've enjoyed seeing them. I have a couple announcements that I need to make sure everybody hears this week so I'm going to start with those. First of all, Christmas Eve services will be at 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. as normal. So we will have Christmas Eve services um, here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. both. Please make sure you let others know about that, just friends, community who may not have somewhere to go on Christmas Eve that would be looking for a church service, but they will be at 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. Um, Trinity Tippy has served faithfully and wonderfully as our nursery coordinator for the past few years, but she is stepping down from that position. And I wanted to share that with you guys. She actually officially stepped down a few weeks back, but agreed to stay on through the end of December just to help us out. But she has done a wonderful job. And next Sunday will be her last Sunday officially in that position. So if you are someone who Trinity's helped care for your children or grandchildren or just you just appreciate her, if you want to bring a card or something to show her how much we appreciate her, that would mean a lot. But next Sunday will be her last Sunday. Also, I'm looking for a new nursery coordinator. If you know of someone who could serve in that position, please let me know or ask them to contact me. Brennan Rigsby um, is now serving as one of our nursery helpers and we're excited to have her on. She's wonderful with the kids, but we do need an actual nursery coordinator, someone a little bit older to be in charge of organizing things and things like that. So if you know of someone, please let me know. Christmas Eve Meals on Wheels. You all have been wonderful to sign up again this year and help us out with that. We will, of course, pack the meals on Christmas Eve morning. If you have signed up to um, bring food, dessert, or something like that, please have it here hot by 8 o'clock. We don't cook here. We just pack, so please make sure your food is hot and ready to go and in a disposable container by 8 a.m. on Christmas Eve morning. If, for some reason, you are not comfortable coming up here to deliver it, that morning, please let me know. I am meeting a few people on December 23rd here at the church to get theirs who don't feel com comfortable coming up here. So if that's something you need to do, please just contact me and I'll make arrangements to get it. If you are someone who has signed up to pack meals, please be here by 730. And if you are someone who has signed up to deliver meals, be in the back parking lot by 915. Are there any other announcements, joys, concerns this morning? I did not. The blue Christmas service will be December 22nd, correct, Miss Jane? And it starts at what time? It starts at 6 p.m. officially. But if. Okay. For those of you who don't know what a blue Christmas service is, especially our friends who may be watching online, our blue Christmas service is a service we started a few years back designed for those who may not quite feel so jolly this time of year. Whether it's sadness, whether it's grief, whether it's loss, whether it's you don't know what it is. And it's just a service where it's okay to not be okay. I think that's an accurate description, Miss Jane. So if you know of someone especially, honestly, I don't know of anyone who in 2020 hasn't lost their joy at some point in time. So really it would bless all of us to be here December 22nd for that service. It's at six, but if you need a little extra quiet time to reflect and just have some peace and quiet, Miss Jane will be here from noon on. And she ain't gonna bother you if you don't wanna be bothered. She'll just let you be. Anyone else this morning? I did. I did. Now, if you will join me in our call to worship on the screens behind me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. 
stand if you're able. We're going to begin our service in song by singing A Little Town of Bethlehem. It's, whoa, it's really loud. Good morning. Good morning. Um, poor Jamie, he was probably like, oh, we can't hear. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. Let's turn it up. And then it's up. Um, anyway, what I was going to say is, um, I'm still really loud. Please make plans Christmas Eve to do one of two things. Either plan on coming if you feel comfortable, and that's something that you at home or you here feel comfortable with. Do three things. The second thing is spread the word because a lot of people, that's the only time that they make the time to come to church. And so that's one of the reasons why we made the decision to go ahead and have the Christmas Eve services. But the third thing I'd like to ask you to do is um, make sure that you share this information with as many people as you can. And if you can't come, watch it 
online. I'm not sure which service will be online. More than likely, it will be the six o'clock um, because it's really hard to, it's kind of dark in here at 11. It's dark at six, but it's darker at 11. But um, we would love for you not to miss that opportunity to welcome Christmas because I think we need all the holly and jolly and joy and um, light and life that we can find this Christmas. Um, I know Nicole already mentioned it and you probably get tired of people talking, but I do want to invite you to the Blue Christmas service. If you've not ever been, please plan to attend. That will not be live streamed. And there's a reason why it's not live streamed. It's an emotional service for some people. It's an, some people find themselves very emotional during that service and they don't need to have that on the internet. People don't need to see people crying on the internet. Um, and so it won't be live streamed. So we would just love to have you come if you feel comfortable or like Jane said before, if you just need a minute, um, it, Micah, my, Micah, my son-in-law, Jill's husband will be, Jane will be speaking, I'll be speaking, Michael will be speaking. We're not going to do a lot of speaking. Uh, most of it will be meditatively finding ways to prepare for this Christmas, whether it's a Christmas where you have someone missing or it's a Christmas that you have a lot of someone's missing because you can't get together or it's a Christmas like every other Christmas where it's just not your thing and you need to shore up your um, emotions and fortitude to make it through Christmas. So we would love to have you. Once again, invite people. Typically, Bass Funeral Home has a remembrance service, but this year they've chosen not to. So there's a lot of people that are spending this Christmas for the first year without someone in their family, and it would be wonderful to tell them about this. It's been advertised everywhere, but still mention it if you know someone. But anyway, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Almighty God, we come to you just thankful this morning to be fit, able, and well to come. Um, Lord, we lift up the people that can't come because of their health. We lift up the people that can't come because they're taking care of someone whose health is not stable right now. We lift up those that are missing people this time of year because whatever reason. Lord, we also lift up those that are not going to be able to gather with their family or do whatever they usually do. Their traditions have changed this year. Lord, we lift up the people that think January 1st, everything's going to reset back to normal. Um, I think I would love to believe that too, but I think we've got, you know, it'll be a slower process. But Lord, I know that we are your children and you bring light into our darkness and that's what will take us into the new year and a new life and a new season. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son who made this light and life possible. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit who has joined us this morning and is always with us, among us, within us, to guide us and connect us to you. And Lord, we thank you that you are a God who loves us and cares for us and wants to be with us and created us into perfect beings, and we are your perfect children. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand again if, you, if you're able. We're going to sing in the bleak midwinter. And this is one of my favorite Christmas songs. Um, and I, every time I think of singing this song, I, I remember the passage of scripture that says, you know, the people that walked in darkness, it makes reference to that, have seen a great light. You know, we're all drawn to light. And um, as we sing this, even though it's a gloomy day, I pray that uh, that light inside um, grows in the bleak midwinter.
Look who's here today. <laughs> she works a lot, but she makes me proud, and I'm happy she's here with her mom and her sister today. We gather for worship and expectation. We gather to look for Jesus. Lift up the lowly. Fill the hungry. Help your servants in spite of our faithlessness. Help us see the potential for new life in the midst of barrenness. Show us the way of Mary. Show us the way of obedience in the midst of doubt. We light this candle as a prayer for God to upend our priorities. It's okay. Just light the other one, then put it out. You're fine. You're good. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In Christ there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. It's always fun to find ways to talk about the offering and to talk about giving without passing the plates. Um, a wise man once told me, I won't tell you who that wise man was, but he's in this room, that um, he had seen some ushers just lean across people and let them drop money in a plate. And when we... Um, we're talking, he said, I really feel like that plate needs to be passed. And I said, okay, why? And he said, because people need to hold those blessings. They need to hold. There's something about holding them and passing them that is divine. It's holy. And I miss that part. So right now, because it's weird and I just want to make you feel as weird as I possibly can. And you guys at home do this too. Turn to someone and say, you are a blessing. You guys are blessings. And then now let us stand and thank God for those blessings that are flowing into our lives. 
in whatever form they're coming. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. And from the book of John, chapter 12, verses 35 and 36. Jesus replied, My light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. And this is the word of God for the people of God.
I don't know about you, but I've been waiting all Advent for that. <laughs> I could listen to that all day long. Um, I'm going to ask Mia to go ahead and show the movie clip. I'm not even going to lead into it. Um, just roll tape, roll footage in that one. on YouTube. It's actually just the trailer of the movie um, because I wanted to show the hodgepodge. I wanted to show some fun things. Um, what was going to show was it was going to show Mary having baby Jesus, not the graphic parts, but just baby Jesus coming and a little bit of their travel and a little bit of things you've already seen and the wise men following the star, which by the way, don't forget um, Monday night. Hopefully the skies will be clear and you can see the conjunction, which is the Jupiter and Saturn. Is that the two that come together? No, which two is it? Is it? I thought so. Ju Jupiter and Saturn come together and they believe that that's what made the star. That's the big, the big conjunction. And it'll be the first time in 800 years and we won't see it again for two or 300 years. And then after that, it'll be a really long time. And I don't think any of us will be around in 200 years, so this is your chance. Um, at least I don't plan to be around in 200 years. So it'd be worth seeing. Let's pray that that night it is not cloudy. But what I wanted to ask you this week, so last week I had several people go, why don't you have your Christmas shopping done? I told you that last week I didn't. And they were like, there were people legitimately worried about me, and I'm not going to lie, I was worried about myself, but it's done. I got it done. I don't know what I have for people. It's all piled up, but I got it. I was a little in the dark this year. Um, I don't know about you, but I usually am that person that I make a list. I check it twice. I'm kind of like Santa. I even have an app on my phone where I can budget how much I'm going to spend for each person and what exactly I'm going to get for each person. And it even allows me to cross comparison prices and I get the right gift. And then once I get it, I can swipe and it goes to another pile. And I know when I've got everybody taken care of. I'm that organized. And I start usually in October. I know, right? D does this surprise you in any way? But this year, that is not what happened. It's like I feel like this is the first time in my life where the world has crept at a snail's pace while sped at the speed of light simultaneously. It's like it seems like it takes forever to get through things, but I woke up one morning and it was the week before Christmas. And I don't even know how we got there. And so I was in the dark and I just like got things. So what I found when I was finished, I didn't spend as much money. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm slightly worried that I've left someone out, but I'm also a little excited that I didn't spend as much money. So that's our poll today. I think it's COVID related that I didn't spend as much money, but your choices are, I spent the same, I spent more, I spent less. So if you spent more, and that would make sense too, because you're trying to make up for other experiences that aren't happening, raise your hand if you spend a little bit more. And prices have gone up since last year. <laughs> we'll give you that, you know. <laughs> the second one is, okay, so you spent about the same. I spent less this year. Some of you did not vote. Some of you are in the dark and don't know. That is really, that's what it is. You're in the dark and you don't know. Well, I've got good news for you today. Advent is about being in the dark. That's what Advent is. It's all about being in the dark. And we are in the dark until the light and the light comes, the light and the life comes, and it brings new light and new life into our world. And that's what Advent's all about, is to remind us that we often find ourselves in the dark and that through Christ we can find ourselves back in the light and that we don't have to stay in the dark, that that was the gift God gave us at Christmas was this gift of the light. 
and we're going to be look. you know, Nicole read from John, the Gospel of John. I think he's my favorite gospel, although in Bible study, I told them he's a little like Dr. Seuss. I think it, once it was translated, it was like the word was God and the word was with God. And in the beginning, you know, it kind of goes back and forth a little sing-songy like Dr. Seuss. But at the same time, John was reflecting on his life with Jesus. The other gospel writers kind of did the dragnet version of just the facts. Here's what happened. Luke gave you more facts. Mark gave you a lot less facts. Matthew gave you all the Jewish facts. But John related back to his... Now remember, John was the disciple that Jesus loved most, or at least that's what John told us in his gospel, was that he was the one that Jesus loved most, and he was the one that lived the longest, and he was the one that wrote his gospel the latest. And so he wrote it almost as if he were a man in advanced age looking back over an amazing relationship with amazing person. And that's exactly how he describes Jesus. He doesn't describe him as a little baby in a manger. He doesn't describe him as in the first, you know, in the birth part. He describes him as the word stepped down from heaven into our lives to bring us lightness in our darkness. So it's really interesting because in as humans, we spend a lot of time in the dark. And the most dangerous people are the people who think they're never in the dark because they've become so accustomed to the artificial light that they've created or found themselves in that they don't even realize they're in the dark. But we spend a lot of time, and that is one of the downsides of being human and having this humanity that we have. But God loved us so much that he gave us, this is from John as well, his only begotten son that those who believe him shall have everlasting life. We have a life and a light. Now this love word. I want to talk about this love word. You all have heard this before. It's not love like Eros love, which is a self-satisfying love that's a love that makes us feel good. Like, I love pizza. Pizza makes me super happy. Pizza is not on my diet, but I don't care. I'm going to eat pizza because it makes me happy. It gives me the feels. Philos love is the love that I have for you and the love you have for me and the love that you have for mankind. It's a brotherly love. That's Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love, and that's where they got that from, Philos. There's Storge love, which is hospitality love. It's the kind of love you have, you know, as you're out shopping and you're not being ugly and you're being kind to people. That's that kind of love. Or you invite people into your home and, and treat them well. But God's love is agape. Unless you're from the south and it's agape. But it's agape and it's a love that only God can create. And it's a love that is so holy and so divine that there are no strings attached. It has power it has might, it can create, it can restore, it can redeem. It is amazing. And it's that love, that gift of love from God that created us. And if you don't believe that, look at any newborn baby, man. That is where you see that gift of love. And it's also the same love that brings us out of the darkness whenever we find ourselves there. Now, mankind, as I told you earlier, we have a way of finding ourselves in the darkness, and there's two ways this happens. One, we tend to think, and I don't think, I want to believe this is not done intentionally. I don't think any of us wake up in the morning and go, you know what, I'm smarter than God. And so I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to live my life the way I want to live my life because God doesn't know what he's talking about. I feel like that's a very small percentage of the population that actually would do that. But there's a bunch of us that get up, and we just don't stop long enough, pause long enough, pray long enough to really know what it is God wants us to do, and we find ourselves substituting God's wisdom for ours. And invariably, our wisdom leads us into darkness. You know, we saw that in the garden. 
you know, God gave him this wonderful place to live with him. They walked with him. They talked with him. Just like the song said, it was beautiful. They were given instructions not to eat from the, knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Not because God didn't want them to know everything like the serpent tempted them with. But because he knew that mankind cannot withstand the knowledge of evil. We are not created to know evil and not fall prey to evil. We're just not able. Only God can do that. And so he's like, don't do that because you might get the knowledge of good, which I can give you anyway. Or you will also get the knowledge of evil and you can't handle it. And what did we do? We substituted our wisdom for God's wisdom and we did it anyway. And what did they do? They ran and hid. Remember? They ran and put themselves in the darkness. And the funny thing is, when we put ourselves in the darkness like that, God knows where we are. And he, but the best news is he will come find you. He will come hunt you down. Not in a bad way, not like a dog, but he will find you because just like when your children have done something wrong, you go seek them out so that you can work through it. And he banished them from the garden, not because he wanted to punish them or make their lives miserable, but because now that they had the knowledge of evil, they could not desecrate the perfect garden with this knowledge. And living in the garden would give them the ability to live forever, and that couldn't happen either. And that's why we don't live forever like that in our human state. We saw it with Noah. God rescued them there. He did it a little bit more dramatically this time. The world had fallen prey. A lot of people had fallen prey to darkness. And so he asked Noah to build a, a, a boat to put everybody and all the critters on and to talk to everybody and say, come along, come with me. And nobody came but his family and the animals that they put on there. And God wiped out. He washed away the evil. But we found ourselves in darkness again and Moses had to rescue us from the Egyptians but God sent Moses to do that, to bring us back into the light when we put ourselves in the darkness. He sent prophet after prophet after prophet to speak his word into our lives, to give us light, to give us a glimpse of what was, could be for us. But then things fell silent. People cannot find evidence of prophets speaking or things happening for about 400 years, that intertestamental period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's just nothing. I don't know why God did that. I don't know why God didn't bring Jesus sooner. I don't know why God left that silence there. I don't think he was giving his people the silent treatment. I believe God's timing is perfect, and for whatever reason, that time had to be when it was as it was. And for us, that seems not fair, but at the same time, I didn't let my daughter have a cell phone until she was 16, and she didn't think that was fair either because that was the right time when I put her behind the wheel of a car. Sometimes God knows more what we need and when we need it all the time, not sometimes, than we do. But what I find amazing is when we were in that darkness, humanity was in that darkness during that testamental period, they held on to the hope that the Messiah would come and rescue them. They had had so much evidence throughout their history and their spiritual DNA where they saw where God came in and brought them out of the darkness. And what was really awesome is what we also see is that he did. He did it. And he did it in a weird way. He did it in the form of a baby. He didn't send David the warrior an anointed king. He didn't send a prophet like Elijah to come and talk them out of their darkness. He didn't send Moses, a deliverer, to remove them from the bad place they put them in. He sent a simple man to speak life and light into their darkness. But what he also did was he himself was that man. 
God stepped down from his throne. He's Emmanuel, God with us. I mean, that's what scripture tells us. That's what the prophets told us. That's what the angel told Mary and Joseph is that he would be Emmanuel, God with us. He came to be with us. And he had to put on humanity because it was important for us to see. We saw God revealed in this man called Jesus, but he gave us light. And that's what John wrote to us. I think Nicole read this. I think it was actually our call to worship. But I love it. It's in the beginning the, was the word. And if you look at your Bible, if you look at that scripture, it's not a little W. It's a big W. It's a name. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And he was with God in the beginning and through all him through him all things were made and without him nothing was made that has been made and in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind and that light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it so this light that Jesus brings into your light cannot be overtaken by darkness. Now, you may wander yourself into the darkness. You may put yourself into the darkness. You may actually flash on so much artificial light that you don't even know you're in the darkness. But that darkness cannot overcome the word. Now, I got to looking at that overcome it, that overcome it word. And it's katalabano, katalabano. You guys are stretching my Greek this year. But this is what's cool. It means that darkness cannot take hold of it. Now let that sit on your soul for a minute. What John wrote with his 60 years of pondering his relationship with Jesus. How many of you got a friend you've known for 60 years? He's telling us that this light that Jesus is, that the word is, darkness can't even touch it. Darkness can't even latch on to it. Darkness can't even affect it. That you will be in the light because darkness can't overcome the creator. Because John also told us that he was part of the creation, that nothing was created unless it went through him. Because what we see in the beginning in Genesis is we see God, we see the spirit hovering, and we see the word because God speaks everything into existence. And the word is logos, wisdom, divine wisdom, emanating from God. So when God needed to step down from that throne and once again rescue us from the darkness in a real and personal way, he sent his life, his light, and his wisdom to make that happen. God rescued us from the darkness with the gift of himself to save us from our desire to defeat ourselves. I don't know if you've ever really thought about that, but friends, that's what we do. When we replace our wisdom for God's wisdom, we're setting ourselves up to defeat ourselves. And I'm going to give you like just 10 seconds to think of the worst mistake you ever made. Was that God's wisdom or yours? But God will rescue you if he hasn't yet but he probably did. And that darkness, just like it can't latch on to the word, it cannot latch on to you as long as you're with the word. John later writes in chapter 12, my light will shine for you just a little while longer. Walk in the light while you can so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they're going Put your trust in the light while there is still time, and then you will become, does anybody know what the next words are? Children of the light. You will become a child of the very light that cannot be overcome and overtaken if you walk in that light. Now, here's the thing about that gift, this gift of Jesus 
this gift that God gave us of stepping down from his throne and erasing our darkness. And he doesn't erase the darkness. Have you noticed that? Scripture doesn't tell us he erases it. He just doesn't let it overtake us and he rescues us from it. That darkness is a form of evil. It's not something that God created. But here's the thing about the gift, this gift of light, this gift of love, agape. It's best when shared. You know, it only takes a spark to get a fire going, that kind of thought process. But I was trying to think of a new and different way to help you understand how this works. And, and, and this is what came to me. We, this week has been a week of baking. By the way, Heather, how did the scones turn out? Good. And you didn't bring me one? Dang. Um, our house has been the bake shop this week. Joe had to bake a lot of scones. Well, he offered to bake a lot of scones for the Emmanuel House fundraiser. And, and, um, and I thank you for that because I got one. And um, also, he baked a whole bunch of muffins this morning to go to the people that they deliver meals to. And sometime this week, he'll probably be baking bread, maybe today. I don't know. Bread making happens every week at our house. And all these things are being baked. And I got to thinking about this as I delivered scones to someone's house yesterday morning who needed some scones and then delivered the scones up here. And knowing that I'd already had my one, I was like, dang, they're gone. You know, he poured all this love into these scones and they're just, they're gone. But then I thought about this. So I went to Jill's house yesterday to distantly deliver some things for Christmas. And she was bragging about her sourdough starter. The sourdough starter that she's using to make communion bread for Micah's church. They're going to do the same thing that we do with the communion bread. Now, the thing about that is, she had to have a sourdough starter to make that bread. She got it from Joe. And when we have communion, two people make that bread, Joanne James and Joe. And you know where Joe got the starter? Joanne. And that starter probably came from somebody else. I don't know who, but the point is, agape love is more like that. It doesn't go away when you give it away. It just grows some more and you make more and it just keeps being something that keeps going on and on. So that light that you have been rescued into, if you allow that agape love to flow through you to others, that light will shine on others. And I don't know if you're ever here on Christmas Eve, but we make it pretty dark and we light one candle and then they spread. And that's how that works. I mean, it gets... Time we get all the candles lit in here, it's bright. And it's all starting with that one flame. So I guess what I'm trying to help you understand is that you have been given a gift. And if that gift of love turns within you into arrows, something that self-satisfies you and, and makes you happy like Joe's new Christmas cranberry oat scones, they make me really happy, but when I eat them, they're gone. But man, but your love can also be that philos love where you just deliver some scones to somebody and put a smile on their face when they wake up and get out of bed, but they're gone. But when you take someone, the starter, or share the bread, you know there's always more. It goes on and on and on because man's love will run out. Man's love can be overtaken by darkness, but God's love will not run out and darkness cannot latch on. And not only that, it will extinguish darkness as the light grows. That baby in a manger may have had a light for a moment in that Bethlehem star, you know, you always see the pictures. That's why I wish we could have seen the movie. I love how, like, in the movie, they're in the manger, which is really rock carved in the side of the, the thing, and there's a hole in the top, and then the, so the light is so bright that it shines down in there, and everybody glows. You know, there may, that may have happened. We don't know, but it was for a time. 
It was for a season, and it went away. But God's love that flows down on us and through us eradicates our darkness and doesn't let darkness hold on to it, and we can share that light for others. So what I want you to do right now, this is what I want you to do. Check yourself. Just check yourself. Are you taking gifts or are you sharing gifts? Are you sharing the gift of light? Or are you just taking what God's bringing to you and letting it stop there? That doesn't mean you have to go and do simple phone calls, simple prayers, smiling, sacrificing some of you for someone else. Let that light of Christ grow in you. Let it grow to where it eradicates darkness or artificial light to the point that when people look at you, they see Jesus because the light is so bright, that's all they can see. In that, we erase the darkness of Advent and we welcome the light of Christ in us. Let us pray. Father God, it's been a busy couple of weeks. We've fed hungry. We've shared with homeless. We've taken food. We're preparing more food. We've given gifts. And Christmas is a coming. Let us lean into this darkness so that we seek the light. And then when the real true light comes, let it rescue us and redeem us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. May your soul be filled by the beautiful music, the wonders of Christ in our life, the light that floods down on you every day. Have a blessed and holy week. I hope I see you Tuesday and Thursday and next Sunday.
not, oh, it was not, long, it was not stupid. It was glorious. And I'm glad you used your forest. Yes, 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 I did go. Yes. I thought you would recognize it. Yes. Yes. Very, very lovely. Very, very nice. I just uh, thank and thank what you did. I wanted to do that. Thank you. 